Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the RC Benchmark 1520 Frustend. While it might look like a simple device, it's actually a very capable and sophisticated one, and from now on I'm going to use it on my upcoming Moto Frost tests, instead of my previous Moto Frostend, which turned out to be not very accurate, at least in terms of measuring current. In this video I'm going to assemble the Frostend, go over its features and specs, and show you how to use it. In terms of packaging, inside the box you can find the user manual, a USB to mini USB cable, the frost end base and two motor mounts which are made out of high quality powder coated aluminum, the main board of the frost end, the load cell which is going to be connected to the motherboard and can measure up to 5 kilograms of frost, a bag with zip ties, hex key drivers and all the needed screws and spacers for assembling the frost end, and a bag that contains two 2.5 feet 12 gauge silicon wires and two single pin servo connectors. In order to assemble the frost stand, first place the two hex screws along with the washers inside the designated holes in the motherboard, then place the two aluminum spacers on the other side, then insert the hex screws into these two holes in the base, and using the provided 3mm hex key driver, secure the motherboard to the load cell unit. Pay attention when installing the load cell that the servo connector faces the top right side, and now using this connector we can connect it to the main unit. Now we can install the motor mounts. I'm going to use the smaller one out of the two since it's going to fit most of the motors which I'm going to test. Then mount and secure an ESC which by the way is not included, preferably using a double sided tape and a zip tie to this part of the motherboard. Connect its signal and ground pads to the top servo connector. Solder the power cords and connect them to the ESC ground and VCC ports on the motherboard. And finally using the provided power cords, connect a battery connector to the motherboard. In addition, in case you have one, mount the optional optical RPM sensor and connect it to the signal 1 port on the motherboard. You should note that the main board is not going to power the optical RPM sensor, so you have to make sure that you are using an ESC with a 5 volts BC. Mine doesn't have one, and anyway I think that the built-in RPM sensor should be enough for the motors that I'm going to test, so I'm not going to use the optical sensor. In order to use the built-in electrical RPM sensor, you'll need to solder a wire from one of the motor phases, and connect it to the RPM probe connector. Now using the RC Benchmark data acquisition software, which is available for Windows, Linux and Mac, we can configure and start using the Frost End. So based on your operating system, download and install the appropriate version. Then launch the application and connect the Frost End to your computer using the provided 2 meters long USB to mini USB cable. On my main computer, everything walked out of the box. So after hitting the connect button, the Frost End was connected successfully. Now I'm going to show you how to configure and use the RC Benchmark software. Under the setup tab you can select the user interface language, so you can set it to either English or Chinese. You can select the main RPM sensor, the default option for the 1520 frost stand is the electrical RPM sensor, and in case you are going to use it you need to select the number of magnetic poles, and in case you are going to use the optional optical RPM sensor, you will need to define the number of reflective tapes. Next to each option you can find a question mark which will give you more information about it, and everything is well documented. In addition, you can also define the walking units, update the firmware of the frost end, set the walking directory where all the logs are going to be saved, and backup, restore, and clear the app settings. Under the utilities tab, you can calibrate the frost end, which is something that you must do before using it. You can either enter these digits, which are found on the sticker on the load cell, and then the app is going to retrieve the calibration data from RC Benchmark servers, so you'll have to make sure that you have internet connection. The second option is to manually calibrate it by yourself, and for that you will need to place a weight between 50 to 5000 grams on the load cell, enter it next to the calibration weight, hit next, and follow the wizard. Under the calibrate thrust button, you can find the reverse thrust sign option, so if you'd like you can reverse it, however you should note that according to RC Benchmark, it's better to set the thrust end in a pusher configuration. Under control signals, you can set the safety cutoff throttle value, which the ESC is going to be set to in case one of the safety limits are going to be reached, or you're going to press the spacebar key while performing a test, and you can also set the manual control slider limits, and as you can see the default values are between 1000 to 2000. Under the safety cutoff stops, you can set the minimum and maximum values for the voltage, continuous current, burst current, power, thrust, and motor rotation speed. You should note that these are the default out of the box values, so without adjusting them you won't be able to start the tests because for example the maximum power is set to zero. 
I'm going to use mainly motors that are designed for 5 inch propellers and up to 6S batteries. So these are the values that I'm going to use. And that's a good opportunity to mention that the 1520 thrust end supports a continuous current of 40 amperes with a burst current of 50 amperes. Under the manual control tab, you can manually start a test and record the results to a CSV file. You should note that in order to start a test, the EC needs to be powered by a battery, and in addition, the checkbox next to EC needs to be enabled. Now you can set manually the value of the ESC using this slider. And you can also select which real-time plots are going to be displayed. So we can monitor the motor rotation speed, the measured thrust, the power, the EC voltage, current, and the overall efficiency. Moving on to the most important and useful feature of the thrust end, the ability to run custom automated tasks using JavaScript. It will require you to have some basic JavaScript knowledge However, RC Benchmark are providing you with some examples which you can modify, and in addition, documentation that shows you how to use the different API functions. Let's quickly go over one of the provided examples. The purpose of this script is to sweep between different values using user-defined variables. First of all, in order to make changes, you will need to hit the clone button. Now the script is going to be saved as a new custom script, and over here we can define the new file name. The first value named minval is the minimum input value. The second one is the maximum value. So for example, if you would like to set the throttle to 100%, we're gonna change it to 2000. The next variable defines the number of steps. So for example, if you would like to increase the motor output at 10% increments from 0% to 100%, we will change this value to 10. The next value defines the settling time in seconds between every input change. If you'd like to see where it is being used, you can simply press Command F if you're using Mac or Control F if you're using Windows. Then we can search for this value. And as you can see, this value is being used over here. This function rcb.wait is going to get another function and call it after this set amount of time. So if you would like to run a continuous test, we will simply set this value to zero. The next variable samples average defines the numbers of samples to average. Let's check which function is using this variable. And it is being called by RCB sensor thread, which is a built-in API function. If you'd like to know more about this function, head over to the documentation page, select the read option under sensors. And as you can see, this function is getting a callback and the average quantity, which is an optional value. So in case you would like to get just a single sensor reading, you don't have to pass it. The next variable is steps go down, which is by default set to false. If it is going to be set to true, the test will step down after it's going to reach the maximum value. The next variable is repeat, which is set to 3, and it's going to define the number of times that the test is going to repeat the same sequence. Let's search for this value, and as you can see, it is being called under this new log entry function, which is going to log the data to a new CSV file, and if repeat is going to be set to a value which is greater than 1, it is going to decrease its value by 1, and call the start steps function again. This procedure is going to continue until the repeat value is going to be set to 1, and then it's going to end the script. The last user-defined variable is file prefix, which is by default set to steps test. It is going to define the prefix of the CSV file, which is going to be generated by the app, and it is going to be followed by a timestamp. So for example, here is a CSV file that was generated by the app using a different test. It starts with ramp test, followed by the date, and finally the time of the test. The last tab in the app is database upload. And under this tab, you'll be able to select a test script, configure the test parameters, run the test, and upload the results to RC Benchmark servers in order to share it with other users. So overall, the RC Benchmark 1520 thrust end is a well-capable and advanced product. And even though it's not for everybody, in case you are in the market for a good thrust stand which is backed up by a serious company which also offers even more advanced products for industrial usage, you should definitely check it out. In addition, even though it's not a cheap product, it's not much more expensive than my previous thrust stand, and you definitely get what you pay for. Now after securing the thrust stand to a base, I'm all set, and I'm looking forward to start using this new thrust stand on my upcoming motor reviews. That's going to be it for my review of the RC Benchmark 1520 thrust stand. And as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you have any questions about the RC Benchmark 1520 thrust stand, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video. 
and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.